Hey guys, so today I want to sh um, share with you some of my favorite math books and curriculum and ideas that you can use to homeschool your kindergarten to first grader, depending on their level. Um, you know, some kids younger, sometimes a little bit older. But these are just some ideas that I put together um, after, to be honest, years of trial and error. Um, I think I've been through so many different things. Um, and this, of course, is not an exhaustive list, but it does include um, things that we'll be using over the course of the next year and a half. So with that said, let me just jump right in. Um, the first book that, we're, that we've been working in and actually really enjoying is um, Level 1 of Math Lessons for a Living Education. Now, this is from Angela O'Dell. There are five levels, and they're not by grade. They're just levels one through five. Um, you know, you could use level one for first grade, level, you know, through level five for fifth grade. But again, depending on your child's level, you can, um, you know, use whichever they need. And there's no, you know, stress or stigma, quote, you know, uh, accompanying that. Because if they're, you know, in second grade but working on level one, they're not going to stress out because it doesn't say grade one. So anyways, that is just one of the great things about this. There are several great things about this. Um, this is a faith-based faith curriculum. So you are going to get some um, references to God. And isn't it wonderful how God created this and that? But I would say probably every maybe 15 to 20 pages in it's not like glaring in your face if that's something um it says here can you see how god uses patterns all around us that's just one example but you know you could go pages and pages and pages without any references like that so of course you can you know if your child is not reading yet you can easily just um skip over that so there is there is that aspect of it. I don't have a problem with that. I you know do you know encourage spirituality over religion. Um, so I really have no problem with this. So that is that. Now the way that these are set up is that you will work on with your student. Um, they are broken down by day. So day one, day two. You know, so we actually have in in a one day period on March 7th, he went through and did an entire week's worth of work. So this is where my idea about don't get um, stressed out about doing your math because the way, you know, we only worked from March 7th through March 29th in this book and we've covered basically almost six weeks worth of work, um, you know, in a month. So it depends on your 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 student of course so again we did um we did um seven you know an entire week here here we did another entire week on the next day then we skipped so we went march 10th and then the 18th we did then we um we actually skipped these two pages i'm going to come back to them there's really no other no reason or rhyme to why we skipped them we just you know, I just went with his level. He just didn't feel like doing those pages, so I didn't stress about it. I just skipped it. I put them in the back of the book, and we'll come back to them later, and it'll be kind of like a review. And then on March 25th, we did another week's worth. So we skipped about a week here, a couple days, and we did other activities, which, of course, I will show you. And then on the 29th, on the 29th, we... Um, we did an entire week's worth again, um, and then going into the next week. So that just gives you an idea that you can skip. It's okay. Your child is not going to, um, the world isn't going to fall apart if you skip some days. And, you know, you just follow your, your levels of um, being able to, you know, around your schedule, and then you follow your child's cues, first of all. So this is a book that Zach really loves, so we've been using it regularly. Now we are on lesson seven and what it did is it taught in depth um, numbers zero through nine. So we worked significantly on zero through nine and then some shapes. Now the way that everything is set up is that in each lesson it begins um, you'll get a story and then, um, in this case, Charlie and Charlotte, they go to visit their grandparents um, on a farm. So you kind of get, you know, their story and then the numbers. And then they work through little activities and learning about the animals on the farm and 
um, again, just doing. Now, of course, you know, Zach is almost six, so some of this is, and actually a lot of this is, um, you know, review, but because he is, you know, counting to 100, but there's a natural progression and a reason why. So again, this is real life, like, you know, math for a living education. So what that means is it is real life based. So grandma lives, you know, um, raises chickens, so she sells eggs. Now, one of the assignments is, and this is real life stuff, she's got to sort out her eggs for the um, some of her customers. So you, you're going to help grandma sort out the orders. So the Smiths need three eggs and um, three uh, three boxes, or three dozen eggs, I think, yeah. No? Three cartons. So, oh, three boxes, okay, so then he, w you know, so then you go three. So you get the idea. Um, so again, it just goes through, and like I said, everything is, um, you know, it, it starts to go, go ahead and, and introduce shapes. Again, when you're dealing with a six-year-old, that's kind of like, oh my gosh, shapes, really? But what I, it's, it's kind of laying the foundation. We're learning about rectangles. And um, well, this is one thing I hadn't ever really noticed in um, learning about shapes before is that it shows this is a right angle. So not only are they learning about rectangles, they're learning about why is something a rectangle. So that's kind of a key point when you're dealing with math. Um, it's something that I missed in my younger um, elementary days is here's what you do, here's what you do, here's what you do. But they never gave me the why. And that was detrimental to my math success as I got older into junior high school and high school. Um, and I missed that foundation and it was, I was a complete mess when it came to math because of that. So I like that this is teaching, this is why y this is a, a, a rectangle. Now again, there are some, you know, because it's on a farm, there are some, you know, chicks are born and it talks about um, the chicks in the egg and how they break out of the, the shell when they're born. So there's some science thrown in here and then draw a picture of a chick in an egg. Um, again, more science, butterfly life cycle. So that's kind of cool. So you, you know, in the story here, it talks about, um, just, you know, just like it throws in some science. So I'm just going to go through some of the pages that we've done here, just so you can see. So you've got math and science in there. Um, what was this one? This was, let me go through here. This was what? Oh, carrots growing, um, growing, huh? Blueberries, right, on the bush, and then the carrots growing under the ground. So it would say, draw a picture of the carrots growing under the ground, which Zachary did. So again, it, it's it's cool. I, I, I really am enjoying this. And one lesson that we're going to be working on tomorrow, we're going into lesson seven, and it's uh, learning to count with bigger numbers. And let me just show you how they do this, which I really like. So um, like I said, it's lesson seven, and then it'll be day 31 and day 31 day 31, and then it'll go to day 32. I don't know if we'll finish, um, you know, if we'll do, if we'll keep going. It just depends on his level of interest and how much, you know, you can kind of tell when your kid is ready to go move on to something else. But I want to show you this too, just to kind of show you what sold me on this um, real quick as well. Okay, so this is what we're working on for tomorrow. It's learning to count with bigger numbers and place values. And it's easy enough to teach, okay, zero through, you know, one through 10. But because they started with zero, um, we went zero to nine, and then now we're gonna go nine to, um, nine to 20, I don't know. But what is cool is that it's saying, okay, you've, you've got zero to nine. Once you hit nine, um, it's, it's telling you you've got three houses and once you have nine beans in this case into, in a house, only nine can fit in the one's house. So then it moves over to the 10. So then you have 10. So it's a natural progression. And I like that because it's teaching place value in a way that's understandable. So what we're going to do and what I'm going to do to prep this lesson is I will, um, there's a template in the back of the book where I can cut out these little houses and put them on containers. So you got three cups or containers, a small one for the ones, medium for the tens and large one for the hundreds. And then you move, um, each, 
set of beans in from one house to the other as you count up. So that is what really kind of sold me because it's small increments um, to teach a greater concept, which I really, really liked. So that again, um, and I will put a link to most, if I can find them all, all of these um, um, books below or links to all of these materials and books below in the description. This is Math Lessons for a Living Education Level 1 book um, and I showed this in another video as well but we kind of came back to this this weekend and again that's another thing I want to say that it does not have to be dry textbooks. You can take one of your children's interests and there's always, there, I've seen frozen math books at Dollar Tree. This book I actually got from Amazon. Again, I'll put a link below. Um, Star Wars workbook, kindergarten math skills. Now, it doesn't, you know, it's not like the other book in that um, it's a, a natural progression. Uh, it's just worksheets, and it's a lot of, you know, there's no teaching, really. It's just um, activities and um, drill basically it's not necessarily a teaching workbook but to you know to reinforce ideas or help with numbers you know writing the numbers it's definitely something and of course because it is themed to an interest that your you know my student my child has it will be something that they are um, you know happy to do and again we don't do this page by page it's just you know like you do workbooks you know I uh, you know you can't just buy a bunch of workbooks and call it homeschooling you but you can use them to I mean you could you could do whatever the heck you want in your homeschool but um, if you really want your children to grasp the concepts you you kind of have to to work through um, you know and for spe specifically for math you've got to um, I mean, there's different there's different philosophies. If you're unschooling, granted, people will say you'll learn math as you go, and that is absolutely true, and I'll get to that in a second. But if you are like me and you need kind of a little bit of structure, it's good to have some some options. So again, this is an option. So that's um, one. Like I said, I've seen Frozen and you know Disney themed ones. So there. Okay. So then next up, um, I'm gonna skip over. Now, your library is a great resource. I actually purchased these books because I just wanted to have them, and you know, my library did not have all of these options. Um, and I, this is a, a series, Math Start, and there are three levels. This is level one. I think we could probably move into level two, but there were some concepts that I wanted to specifically target. So um, uh, if you go to the Math Start website, you can see all of the books that are available in um, the levels one, one, two, and three. You can see what they're about, and then there are some links that you can click on with PDFs that give you some specific um, activities you can do and supplemental things you can do. But this one is about time, so this is you know teaching time. Uh, double the ducks. This is basically doubling numbers. Um, leaping lizards. This is like a skip counting kind of book. You know, t counting by fives and twos and things like that. And then missing mittens. Missing mittens is what? What is this one teaching? Oh, odd and even, I believe. Yeah. So, and then again, at the end of the books, um, and I haven't, like, these are just got these from Amazon, but um, I haven't gone through all of them, but they're something that we're going to work through over the summer. Um, work on these books as well. So Missing Mittens is concept is on even numbers. It gives you some ideas. And this actually, what's here in the back might correlate with actually what's on the website. I haven't checked that to, con to confirm that or not. But again, these are Math Start books that I think are a great resource when you need to do math, but you don't want to do math. And it's, it's you know, bringing in the, the fun to it, you know, and, and making it you know, making it not stressful, not, you know, it, it can, it doesn't have to be, you know, let's sit and do our math. You can sit on the sofa or go outside or go to the park and have a picnic and read a book and you've done your math for the day. Okay guys, so the next thing I want to show you is this 100 board. It's a Montessori style board and it's great for teaching counting to 100, counting, you know, consecutively to 10 by twos, by fives. We've, we actually were using it to um, count by fives earlier when we were doing some stuff in another math book. But um, I'm going to 
put a link below to Christina from the Purple Alphabet, her YouTube channel. She does a really great in-depth video on ways you can use this board with your child. And um, I just have some of the tiles here but it comes with this insert and that you can remove and actually we've used this and I've shown in prior videos where um, Zachary uses a wall chart of a hundred and he'll go ahead and, and type the the numbers um, on his uh, in Word on his computer but um, here you know you can use it with or without the chart here so they can go ahead and count you know so this is another way to bring math in and make it a tangible thing um, and I definitely highly recommend it because we've come back to this a few times and again it's one of those things where you know it can fit in you can fit in math whenever it doesn't have to be static and dry it can be fun and again I will link below to Christina's um, YouTube channel the purple alphabet um, where she talks about ways you can use this and make it fun for your child okay once your child has mastered counting to a hundred this is a really great book to use this is the Kumon um, my first book of money it's counting coins and there are there's another one after you know for dollars and and you know counting paper money and all that but this is a very good one we haven't you know gotten into this one yet but we will probably work on this this summer and I like how um, it, it kind of goes along with the counting board in that it teaches counting to 100 Again, this goes through um, you know count practicing counting um, numbers tracing the numbers so once your child has mastered 1 to 100 then it's gonna start introducing the coins and it will start with the penny um, and you'll you know count pennies and then it progressively goes from there um, again using that counting by fives to bring go into nickels and again it goes through here counting by tens for the dimes and a quarters 25 then in chapter 19 we're reviewing doing review but we've got half dollars and then starting to count change in each coin purse actually mixing up the um, coins to make different um, you know for different amounts so the most difficult this gets let me just go toward the end where we're incorporating quarters nickels and pennies we're incorporating everything quarters dimes so everything at towards the end um, and I'm not sure how long this is going to take us to get through, but that's fine. Um, it's, you know, there's the, the main point, the main takeaway on this is that there's no rush. Um, when you're homeschooling, there's a tendency to kind of go through and, you know, I've got to reach this, this, and this milestone. And, and the milestones are there, you know, when you go on to your um, state's um, scope and sequence and all of that and what they're teaching or what your child should know by a certain, you know, certain age. Um, I don't necessarily follow that because every child is different and it's nice if you want to have those guidelines so you so yourself can feel like you're on track and all that but every child is different and every child will excel at one thing um, and then you know there's there's time you know at six years old you don't your child does not have to know everything and that's one of the things we put this pressure on ourselves to compare and that's the last thing you want to do is compare your child with um, with um, other students and and that's the beauty of homeschooling and that's kind of one of the problems that I see personally with public school is that everybody has to be on that same level so some kids who are excelling in certain things are kind of you know left to you know wait for everyone else to catch up so the beauty is that your child can excel at their own pace and that's truly what learning is about and the reason why homeschooling is um, in my opinion, a great option if if it's an option that you choose. Um, again, you're, it's child-led in, in the sense that you're letting the child, um, you know, go at their own pace, and that's the best way to to learn. Um, and especially when you're starting to incorporate real life, especially in the math um, aspect, you could take this, go to the, you know, flea market or the farmers market, and give your child a certain amount of money and have them purchase so getting out there so we talk about the socialization aspect um, and I could do a whole video on that I think I might actually do that but 
you can, you know, go take your child out in the community. And I've done a video, we were just doing that yesterday, and letting them pay for things and getting change back and counting money. So math happens every day, everywhere, at every, any time. So don't forget that. Don't get so caught up on the curriculum that you lose sight of the fact that learning happens everywhere. And that brings me to Life of Fred. Life of Fred is a series of books um, that go through from the very, you know, younger ages, um, kindergarten, all the way up to probably high school and beyond. He got taught, goes into trigonometry, calculus, all of that. This particular book is apples, and they go apples, then I think butterflies, cats, it's A, B, C, um, dogs maybe, I don't know for sure, but this is a very, um, what's, the way that the author of this is Stan, Stanley Schmidt, and the way that he, um, Kind of describes it as it's math as serious as it needs to be. Now it follows Fred. Fred is a um, a professor at a university, and he has a you know he's he, these are some of the adventures that he gets into, and it's kind of written in a storybook style. And we we had tried coming to this a couple of times. That's another point I want to make. If you're t if you start a curriculum and your child is just not into it or it's a struggle or they're not getting it, or you feel like they're missing things, wait, wait a couple months, wait three months, wait six months, wait another year, try it again. I've tried this several times, but now we're at a point at almost six years old where he's ready, and some kids will be ready at four and a half, some kids will be ready at five, some will be ready at seven. Um, it's just a matter of you know taking your child's personal development into consideration, so don't stress out about that. Um, he's ready now and he's enjoying these stories and that when they're ready, it'll all fall into place. Um, but again, Fred is a, a professor at a university. The thing is, Fred's five years old. So it talks about how he, um, just different things that, and it teaches not just math, but it teaches about days of the week. Um, it throws in some really cool stuff. It throws in some, um, you know, learning about temperature, uh, science in here with deciduous trees and all of that. So here you see, um, so Zachary learned the word deciduous today. Now, any other math curriculum, you'd be like, you'd never come across um, that. So this is, again, real life stuff, chess, rules, things like that. Um, real life stuff that just in bits and pieces, because kids, you know, they take on so much information. So why not give them um, things that they can, you know, you know, tuck it away in their brain. It'll come back, and and um, it, it'll come back to play in some other time. You'll see, you'll see how that how that progresses. So again, this is Life of Fred, and I have tried this off and on for a couple years, but now at this age, we are full on using this. Now I'm using this every once in a while. We don't do this every day. We don't do any of these things every day. We just kind of take it as it goes. I don't have a schedule. I don't say at two, you know, 215 to 245, we're going to work on this, that, and the other. We just take it as it comes. We have a flow to our day. Sometimes we don't necessarily have a flow. Um, and that's okay too. Okay. Finally, I am talking about how um, we can just throw away the curriculum, throw the curriculum aside and say, you know what? We know math happens everywhere, every day. You use it, you know, when you're going to the store, you go to the mall, and you want to get, you know, you know what 35% off of this price is. You're using algebra right there. Um, so we use it every day. We just might not think that we use it. So with that said, we use it in cooking. And again, I actually like to cook. We, we do a lot of baking, and I like to use measurements and learning about that to... Um, to kind of incorporate the math. Now, I had this book, I purchased this book off of eBay because I thought it was going to be um, to where, you know, it has specific spoon colors for tablespoon, teaspoon, half teaspoon, and a quarter of a teaspoon, but it didn't come with it. This book is from like 1980, who knows what. And it didn't come with that, but it talks about how to measure, you know, leveling out, and then, you know, so it didn't come with these, so it kind of changed, but then I started to go through, and i looking at the recipes, and I didn't necessarily love them um, for the item, you know, for what, you know, hidden hot dog, like, okay, maybe, but I, I we're a little, you know, tuna, tuna, no, uh, 
I just was not super impressed. But the general idea is get in the kitchen with your kid. And I'll put a link below to a video that I did uh, about a year ago, maybe more, um, for an awesome, awesome cookbook for your kids um, that I received from Edusense. Um, I'll put that link below. You can check it out. I, I did a, a very thorough review with that. And, um, you know, so it's kind of geared for ages 8, 7, that kind of age, but it's awesome. So this one, meh, wasn't super, super thrilled. But my point is you can use cooking to... Um, to teach math. Again, Star Wars cookbook, again, going back to his interests. So, you know, following a recipe, numbers, um, temperature, that kind of thing. It's just um, a way to incorporate math in your everyday. There's that. Same thing with the Waldorf uh, making bread, making soup. We have these cookbooks that we use. We haven't necessarily done the soup, but we've done the breads. There's an Irish soda bread in here as well that we did. Um, so again, measuring, you get the idea. So that is the one aspect of um, unschooling because you use math regularly. Secondly, um, tangible stuff. Now we have counting bears. We have um, some bricks and different things for counting. We're actually going to be starting probably in the winter um, 2017, probably like around Thanksgiving or a little bit before uh, incorporating Matthew C. So in addition to the living uh, Math for a Living Education book that I showed you at the beginning of this video, we're going to be starting Matthew C as well because I do want to have a few options and I don't want to, you know, it's not necessarily complicating things, but I like to try different things and see you know, some some things are richer in richer in um, co you know concepts and things like that than others. So I like to have a, an idea. This year, um, there are these are. Let me just go back and open it. This is the number construction build numbers piece by piece. Now this is something that is really neat. You just go ahead and follow. You'll need you know in this you need two of these little orange um, pieces and then one little U-shaped pieces, and that will make your number two. Now, there's ways, okay, I thought, okay, we'll use this, and it was fun. There's, we have an alphabet one as well. It's kind of cool because we can use it to kind of help, memor, you know, memorize number facts, um, uh, math, you know, math facts, but it's just a good thing to have, and then, so, let's just say it's a day that, you know, it's a down kind of day, you're not feeling, you know, doing a homeschool thing, you can kind of pull things like this out. You can even make something like this. I um, got this, the initially got the alphabet one because I wanted the whole handwriting idea and I didn't want to spend for the handwriting without tears. So I grabbed these. This is from Learning Resources. And you can do all kinds of things. You could take the number two, have the clothespins, put two clothespins. Um, we did that with our phone numbers about a year or so ago. And I'll put our playlist down below to all of our homeschool, um, you know, preschool to kindergarten um, videos. You can check that out, but that's in there as well. So there's a number of things that you can do with this. So, um, so as to make it math, but not necessarily math. Just make it fun. 